Okay. Um, well, we've been talking a lot about Shadows of the Eternals, and I totally went away from the part that I originally started talking about. Um, do you have any little input you could give us on the actual part I'm playing in Eternal Darkness right now? Going back to that for a second. Sure. Uh, a lot of people, when they played this part, uh, didn't realize that uh, you you can't die in this. If you die, you'll just keep coming back to life because you're already dead. Oh, wow. I didn't even know so, that. That's... Yeah, so if you sit there and get beaten, <laughs> if you wait a while, you're, in, you're actually, um, in some sense, I guess, um, you also have the curse of immortality. <laughs> um, nice. But in a different way, you definitely don't come back to life here, as we talked about before. You are dead. And so you can lose an arm, you can lose your head, and it'll come back. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. I didn't even know that, so... Grill wow. says pick up the spell scroll. Oh, sad face. You oh, passed. sad face. Oh, well, if... Way to go, Asuka. <laughs> Well, if you um, if you stand here and get beaten by these guys, watch you'll just come back to life. All right, do it. I want to see this. <laughs> this so it's 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 we did this, and I I guess um, the difficulty level is easy enough that not a lot of people died and noticed it. So, but yeah, you'll 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 see. Uh, any plans for different difficulties in uh, Shadow of the Eternals? No, I was just come up to ask that. <laughs> um, th that's a good question. Um. Not sure yet, actually. Um, there's a lot of reasons to do that, and there's a lot of reasons not to do it. Mm -hmm. I think I think a game, uh, you really people want difficulty levels for replay value, and we're really going to focus on replay value oh, on a wow. content level. Yep. There I am. I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. No, you, you you see you're dead. No, usually you'd be dead, but then the magic configurates your body, and there you go. Yeah. Oh wow, that's actually not cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never experienced that. Me neither. Uh, it, was, it was an opportune time to tell it, because very few people know about that, and it was... Um, I know because I designed that. It was part of... I, I actually did a lot of the design for Anthony and, and, and how he should be and, and what would be going on there. Um, so, um, so, what was I talking about before? Uh, difficulty levels. Difficulty levels. Oh, yeah. So, one of the things that we're doing that's very, very different... Um, just to give you a background story of Shadow of the Eternals, is um, you start off as Paul Becker, he's a police detective, and um, you're brought to a scene of a mass murder in a hospital, part of which is a sane asylum, and there's a lot of, lot of corpses around, but there's two survivors. Uh, one named John Doe, who is um, uh, in a suit. Oh no, sorry, John Doe is in dressed like a biker. He's got a lot of scarification tattoos. Um, and the other is John Smith. He's he looks like he's from Wall Street. He's in a full three-piece suit. And the interesting thing about this is both of them don't know their names, but they want to kill each other. That's the only thing they have in common. Besides that, they're completely the opposite. And depending on how you, so your your job's to interrogate them, and they start telling you stories that seem to be completely random. They're they're, they seem to take place all over the world, and you're like, what is going on? What is wrong with these guys? Um, but depending on the questions you ask and how you interrogate them and other things that you do during the game, you will actually play different characters in the same types of levels. Oh. Wow. So you might not play Clara, depending... I'm just giving this as an example. I'm not giving any spoilers on this. But you might not play this character depending on uh, what decisions you make as Paul Becker and other things during the game. That's pretty amazing. I like that idea. Thanks. You guys seem to be doing a lot of different things, like you were saying earlier with this project. What made you decide now's the time to do this project? Well, um, I guess a lot of the things that we were talking about earlier, uh, about the industry, um, I've been lucky enough to work with uh, and work on very, very big titles um, and very big budget titles. And the industry is going in a direction where I, I, I just as a gamer, I'm sensing it, and I could be wrong, but there's this distance that keeps growing. And I, I ask myself the question: Why am I so excited about Star Drive, as an example? 
and less excited about this AAA project that's coming out next month. I can't tell you why, but I know that that's the case. And so we basically, a lot of us at Precursor said, what is happening um, in the industry that's pushing us this way? And certainly the business has gotten tougher, that's obvious. This connect that's been growing, and as a gamer um, and a person who loves to play games, we thought we would think about it and and see what is what can we what can we do about that if there's if there's this problem there's got to be an opportunity and the opportunity was let's do these things that are different to see if we can potentially change things and do things that we feel that's very hard to avoid the trapper um, <laughs> um, um, if we can do things that um, bring us more in tune with gamers where that feeling that I am describing um, isn't there as much and that's so I, that was a very personal take on that and not everyone may feel the same way but I I just feel I feel that there's this divide growing and I'm, I'm not liking it I'm just I'm just it doesn't feel right so that's why we did all this I can definitely agree with the way you're seeing things which is why that no offense to you or anyone else in, in in Precursor, but I didn't know how things were going to be when I first heard about the project. I didn't know how things were going to go, but, you know, it's kind of the reason why initially I was nervous. But now that I've seen how serious you guys are actually taking this and how much you actually care about the fans and the community as a whole, I have a lot more faith in you know just the project in general because when i went into this when i initially saw this i didn't know what to, what to think but as i looked more into it as i joined the forms all of this stuff i i just it, i have such a better feeling about just gaming in general i was really nervous to even set up this interview stream thing that we're doing now because when it comes to the the consumer, like you were saying, there is a disconnect now. So it's like you don't know what you're gonna get when you're actually so said, hey, yeah, sure, we'll we'll do a stream with you. And honestly, uh, just seeing the games, you know, the game industry as it is right now, I was very afraid that it was just going to be one of those things where it was going to be like. Yeah, I'm going to talk a bit, but I'm never going to let you talk, or we're going to talk for like 30 minutes, or, or you know, just because that's how games seem to be now. That's how yeah. the community seems to be, that's how, you know, the people that are designing games seem to be now. So, to actually be able to sit down and talk with you guys, have actual conversations, I have a lot more faith in the industry in general as long as there are more people like you because I was yeah. honestly it, it, it I'm just blown away my my mouth has pretty much been agape this entire time cuz I can't <laughs> believe I'm actually sitting here and doing this and it's like such a privilege that I'm actually being talked to as a human being is not as just a statistic well thanks i i um you know it's it's interesting and we've been talking about this at the office and we're introducing a ton of new things like community driven um, content not not driven I guess community because we we have our own that I'll go back into that one for a second I want to make sure why I'll, I'll tell you why I want to be very razor sharp on that one uh, community participation and community created content um, uh, episodic content and crowdfunding these are all these ideas together are very new and a lot of people are raising up questions saying I've never seen this before you know this is really different and they're hesitating and I say a couple things to this and we've been talking about it a lot is come to the forums see for yourself I really really mean that uh, you can see you can chat with me I've got so many chats going on uh, uh, on the forums and I've got just a ton of new friends that I've met. My Skype is exploded. Um, <laughs> um, and but the other thing is, and I really I feel super strongly about this. We are introducing a lot of new things, and people may look at it and go, and maybe that raises concerns for people. But looking at the industry and the disconnects now, what concerns me and others at Precursor more 
is staying with those old ways because it's not going well. It's not great, and something needs to change. So we're trying. We're not claiming to have the answer, but we're trying. Well, I just want to interject and say that my opinion is, well, you kind of do, right? Because I think that you're on right on the money because everything that Asuka says, I completely mirror that sentiment, and it ties right back to what I was saying earlier about those blurbs at, at like, conventions with, with press people and having to think about your marketing image and all this other stuff, because it, this feels like the complete antithesis to that kind of uh, conversation. We're just, we're just kicking and talking about the game and actually discussing and communicating on a human level, and how else can you get the best potential out of people other than doing that, you know, when people are relaxed and they're in their element, they, they work from their strengths rather than their weaknesses, and good things come out. And besides that, like, even even if you look at what's happening now with DRM and DLC, it's another two topics that I rant about ad nauseum, to sometimes to the annoyance of others even, and then I just shut up after a while about it, but... Even if you look at the development and that and pricing models that, that they're trying uh, out in the games industry now, you can see that disconnect there too because they're trying to look for ways to monetize a product and they're not trying to look, for, they're not trying to create a situation where people actually want to buy their game. As in, well, obviously they want to buy their game to be able to play it, but. They don't. They don't feel like they want to really invest money in the developer. It's like there's no enthusiasm in it. It's just a, a step to getting the game. You pay for it. Yeah. Whereas, the way you guys are talking about everything, not just your game, but your whole view on the whole industry and your hope to kind of have an impact on it, that, it, 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 like, that's the kind of people that I want to back up with my cold hard dollar, basically. You know what I mean? Thanks. So even when you get to bare, like way down to bare bones, like you know, the money issue. Even when you get to that, it it, it should be something that people want to invest in. At least in my opinion, and that's what I've said to a number of people, including a few friends of mine who are in the games, uh, games development, uh, like in education uh, for it, in in college and university for it. I've said, uh, you know, whatever you do in the future, please remember that, you know, keep your people close to you and make them part of your, part of the whole process. It's a creative thing and people should want to invest in it. I, I totally agree and, and, you know, the great thing, the great thing about what we're doing too, it has this bonus and think about this for a minute because I've been thinking about it for the last, Aaron and I have been talking about it nonstop for the last two weeks, but... When when the first chapter comes out, and you've created a short story that when a character opens a book, they read it and they can read the story, you'll be able to say as part of the order that I did that, right? And and so it's not only the development of the um, game, but it's the process of going through that. And I've had a lot of people write me saying. Dude, this is really cool what you guys are doing. I've got to tell you, I'm having more fun in the order than I have playing some games. Right. Yeah, me too. I've had the same thing. And and it's and it's for me personally, um, it's it's been a real catharsis because we're really we're really honestly we're going out on a limb here. We're saying we want to get this done. Um, we want to really make this. I guess game that's got hopefully a look that people think is very high quality but at the same time a real grassroots of you want to participate we want you to participate participate at any level you want but let's do something that hasn't been done before let's take this chance this leap of faith that what we're doing here may catch on to something special and regardless of um, you know uh, what people may think uh, it will be an experience like no other from the standpoint of you'll be participating. You, we won't be putting out polls and saying vote for this item and you get it in the game. Not, not that level of all, um, arm's length interaction. We're talking right. about really making stuff and yeah. really getting it in the game. Right. So. Yeah, but the, well, what you said, I mean, to people it will feel different because they care. You know what you just said about those emails that that does 
like it's it's really cool to hear, but it doesn't surprise me because that's exactly how I'd feel if I were to because I'm I'm already thinking I'm gonna go sign up on the forums and everything in it later after tonight and start.